Hello, my name's Roisin and I have too many library books. Hello friends, so I saw on Jen Campbell's channel recently where she did this video where she read the beginning parts of some of the books that she had on her shelves to see if she wanted to continue reading them or put them back to read them at another time or get rid of them altogether. Um, it's kind of like the try a chapter tag except you read a bit more of the book and also I'm going to vlog for the rest of the day so it's going to be a whole 24 hours vlog, well not quite 24, maybe 12. But I thought that this would be a good thing for me to do because I have too many library books. I work in a library, so I have a tendency to get books out of the library when I see them when I'm shelving or they come in and I'm really interested in them. And then they sit around for ages. So I have about 21 books from the library right now. Don't worry, however, this video is not going to be me trying to read the beginning of all 21 of those books because I feel like that would be a bit of a mission. I have two of the Booker Prize shortlisted books, which I'm definitely going to try and read. So they are not part of this experiment. And then I also have a pile of books that I got out for um, Black History Month. Um, and so I'm definitely going to try and read all of these this month too. So outside of those, I have a pile of books that I'm going to try and read the beginning of. And I'm going to try and return some library books unread which is a scandal <laughs> the reason I've had these for so long is because I feel so guilty borrowing them and then not reading them at all but I don't have the time I have definitely bitten off more than I can chew so the books that I'm going to try and read the beginning of we have If I Had Your Face by Frances Cha which is a South Korean novel about plastic surgery and beauty standards and the treatment of women Swimming in the Dark by Thomas Yerdovsky which has been described as uh, Call Me By Your Name set in Soviet Poland the Illness Lesson by Claire Beams, which is about a mysterious il illness that infects a girls' school in Massachusetts in the 19th century. Till by Daniel Kellerman, which was translated from the German by Ross Benjamin. And this is the story of a trickster character from medieval folklore transplanted into the Thirty Years' War in the Bohemian Royal Court. Scabby Queen by Kristen Innes, which is the story of a woman who committed suicide and a look back over her life as a strident feminist and musician. An Isolated Incident by Sonia Kamal, which is the story of a girl who uh, has a tragedy happen to her in Kashmir and gets sent to live in America with family. The Sorterman's Daughter by Yanis Ikovitz, which was translated from the Hebrew by Or Shaf, which is the story of a small town called Mortal in the in Ukraine where the men have been going missing until one day a woman goes missing and they set out to find out what happened. The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde, which is uh, the interconnected stories of three women from the 16th century, the middle of the 20th century and modern day around the Bass Rock and violence against women. A Registry of My Passage on Earth, a collection of historical fiction short stories by Daniel Mason. The Quarry by Ben Halls, an interconnected collection of short stories about working class life in Britain based around a street called The Quarry. The Night Watchman by Louise Erdrich, a piece of Native American fiction around the 1953 Emancipation Act and a small factory on a reservation. And The Year Without Summer, a exploration of the year after the explosion of Mount Tambora when it was dark and overcast for a year and no summer came from the point of view of famous people from the early 19th century. There you go. That is all. 1, 2, 3, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 books that I'm going to try and read the first few chapters, maybe up to about 50 pages of, and try and decide whether I like the writing, whether the story seems interesting, or if I'm going to return them to the library unread. Um, I'm also planning to do some baking today, maybe a bit of embroidery, go to the supermarket. So hopefully it will be a quite cosy vlog with lots and lots of reading. I'm feeling a bit glum today, just a bit anxious and blue. Uh, regulations are changing here and everything just feels a bit up in the air. Um, and there's a lot of fear going on. Uh, and I'm sort of person who absorbs everyone's emotions. So it makes a big dent on me, but hopefully making this vlog will help me cheer up and hopefully it'll be a nice cozy one for you to watch too. Uh, so which one do I start with, do you think?
so I have read the beginning of the first three books which means I'm a quarter of the way through this mini challenge I have set myself and unfortunately for me I really like them all <laughs> which means that I don't want to send any of them back without reading them so far so first I read um Swimming in the Dark by Tomasz Jardowski, uh, which is set in Poland in the early 1980s uh, about a group of university students who go to this work camp, which was uh, compulsory at universities in Poland, where they had to learn to do manual labour and stuff, work on farms basically for a summer. He is a gay man living in Poland at this time when it's not accepted, and he um, it's about his experiences um and this new person that he's going to meet we're just about to meet this new person um, and i really really like the writing style it's really compelling and slow moving and beautiful then if i had your face by francis cha i read the first 30 or so pages of this as well and again i really liked it very different in tone uh, this is about three women who live in seoul and um it's about plastic surgery um that they feel like they have to have and about these um I can't remember what they call it. Room salon girls. So basically they're these women who um, businessmen come and pay to go to these rooms and drink a lot of uh, alcohol. And there are women there who like entertain them and then basically have sex with them. And they have to look a certain way and it's about plastic surgery. And and it's much more fast paced, much more cutting and funny um, in a very dark, dark way. I'm intrigued by it so far. I think it'd be a much faster paced read than the others, but I'm still want to read it. And then we also have The Illness Lesson by Claire Beams which is set in the 1870s in Massachusetts about among this um, idealistic uh, group of people. Um, they had this society where they tried to live in a certain way, but it failed. And now um, the father of the main girl wants to set up a school for girls. And it's kind of about the beginning of that setup for the school. And also there are these red birds that have arrived um, that mysteriously, they were there 30 years ago and they're mysteriously back again. Um, and it's very, very beautifully written. So again, I feel very compelled to read this so I don't really want to get rid of any of these so I have to hope that some of the next ones are um, not as compelling as these three I'm also feeling so tired I don't know what it is but all of a sudden I've come over feeling um, as if someone's replaced half my blood with like concrete uh, and I feel really weighed down so I'm gonna move to the day bed here um, but first I'm gonna put a wash on rock now which i think i'm probably going to keep because i've heard so many good things about it from uh, jen campbell and lauren wade and lauren in the books everybody seems to love this book so i think i'm going to keep this one probably going to end up keeping this one and also the next one that i'm going to read the beginning of after this one is till which is another one that i've heard loads of good things from especially from simon hazel who's a book scrammer i will be linking everyone in the description if you want to check them out but um, yeah, I feel like I'm going to end up keeping all 12 of these books and this day is going to have been for naught, but I'm going to try our best. finished the next three beginning <laughs> I've started the next three books read as much as I'm going to read of them today anyway and I like them all as well um 
a registry of my passage on the earth started with the story about a boxer in uh the 1826 um and i yeah really enjoyed it i thought it was really well written and um it made me intrigued about the story and like what was going to happen um and i really like that when you get a short story that you wish you could know more about i think it's very skillfully done um so i'm definitely want to read more of this i thought that he managed to evoke the period really well for such a short story the bass rock feels like it's going to be a lot slower moving not much happened in the beginning um but i am not put off by that it is not as lyrical as i generally prefer writing to be but it definitely made me want to keep reading and um the writing was intriguing enough i liked the the uh, way it kept circling back to the bass rock itself the way that it was framing um things that happened with the themes of the book so far um till again i really enjoyed i definitely loved how they set up the period um and the small town setting which i don't think is going to be the setting for the rest of it but i thought it was a really good introduction um i thought it was done really well and the way that it was exploring um people and um the the tensions that simmer under the surface i thought that that was really good and intriguing so i'm gonna to want to read that too so <laughs> of the first six none of them i want to return unread um but it is about five o'clock now and i'm really really tired so i think i'm gonna go for a walk which might seem counterintuitive to go for a walk when you're really really tired but i think i just need some fresh air and to get myself moving a bit because you know i haven't been out of the house in two days so i'm gonna try and do that also i'm having a craving for chocolate raisins like a really strong craving for chocolate raisins which um i'm not sure why i just wanted some while i was reading so i'm gonna get some of those and i'm probably gonna make some flapjacks as well some apple flapjacks because i made them before and they were really good um so but for now i'm gonna go for a walk and if i go for my walk and i'm still tired i might have a nap really need to work out a way to film at night where my uh, features don't just completely blend into my face my camera is not the best at night i'm filming perfect during the day but at night i look like a i've got a weird like instagram filter on I look like a blob three more books ah <sighs> yes um so i went for my walk i'm back from my walk now quite clearly and it has got dark because i ate some chocolate raisins and watched some youtube videos um needed a little break to myself to just chill out it is actually really cold i've just turned the heating on now the next three we have the slaughterman's daughter by yaniv Ixkovitz, the quarry by ben halls and an isolated incident by sonia kamal so i'm going to try and read one story from this i think first and then the first 30 or so pages of the others and tell you what i think hopefully i dislike some of these because so far i'm getting rid of nothing i'm not helping myself out very much hello so um it's getting late i'm quite tired i've decided that both the quarry and uh, an isolated incident are being sent back to the library unread. Um, this is about working class lives in Britain um, on the outskirts of London, but the style of the writing just doesn't work for me. Um, it's a lot of telling me stuff, which I'm not that fa much of a fan of. I also feel like the, um, the way it's written is quite inconsistent. Like it's written in accent, it's written in, it's not dialect, but kind of, um, and it feels inconsistent to the way that I understand people from London to speak, having grown up there in a working class 
place myself um and it just seems a bit inconsistent but i don't know much about the writer so maybe he knows more than i do the story just felt a bit flat and a bit pointless and then an isolated incident um is written is not what i was expecting when i picked this up like i was expecting historical well not quite historical but sort of uh, more sort of in-depth literary fiction and this is women's fiction um or at least it's written like women's fiction and it just isn't what i was expecting from the book and not what i wanted from the book um maybe i would like it if i read the whole thing but i just i'm not really enjoying the style of the writing at the moment and um, i've got so many books so i'm just gonna leave it up but um the slaughterman's daughter i did like and so i'm gonna keep that for now anyway and see how i get on um so so far out of nine books i'm keeping seven of them which is not what i was hoping for but maybe the other three will not like all three of them and then it'll be more of a balanced situation um so i'm gonna put some hang my wash out put some of the clothes away uh tidy up a bit have a bath and then i will read the last and i will read the beginning of the last three books and it is a little weird at the morning um so it is the next day now um i didn't oh, i didn't manage to finish my challenge yesterday because after um my bath well during my bath i got into a i had some serious pain and i couldn't really do anything i needed to be helped out of the bath and then take the kind of pill pain painkillers that really zonk you out that are still clearly having an effect this morning Oh, so I couldn't be able. I was really suffering with pain uh, in my back. So we've moved it on to this morning. I'm going to try and read the beginning of these last three books. So, so far, they're big. So far, I have read the beginning of nine books and I'm keeping seven of them. So I don't know, I'm kind of hoping I don't like the beginning of any of these books, even though I have read the beginning of uh, The Night Watchman and uh, Summer, The Year Without Summer, um, in a, god I'm really not with it this morning, in a, try a chapter tag, which I'll leave in the cards above, but I'm going to read a bit more of these ones, the first 30 to 40 pages now, and we'll see how I get on, because I didn't love this the first time, so. We're on to the last book. I just have to read the beginning of Scabby Queen now. Um, I'm kind of hoping I don't like it because, spoiler, I liked the other two. So I'll talk to you about them when I finished reading this book and why I like them and why I'm keeping them. Um, and then we can have a little discussion about how this didn't work and how I need to stop borrowing so many books.
Okay, well, I have finished all of the books. I keep saying I've finished the books, but obviously I haven't finished them. I've just finished reading the intro, the beginning part. First 30 or so pages of all of the books. And so, The Year Without Summer. When I first read this for the Try a Chapter tag, I thought it the writing style wasn't for me. I thought that it wasn't historical enough for me for a historical fiction. It felt too modern. But reading it now, I don't agree with that. I actually think it's doing quite a good job. It's just probably because I start, I did my try chapter tag like just after I'd finished reading The Mirror and the Light and so I was wanting that level of atmosphere and I've realised that you don't need necessarily that level of atmosphere to enjoy a historical fiction. Um, it's just not going to be as good as The Mirror and the Light but that doesn't mean it's not a good book and I am definitely more intrigued now that I've got into different people's perspectives than the very beginning bit. Um, so because it's told from six different perspectives so we started with the eruption and it with letters being written from a ship's medic about the eruption and then the next chapter was john constable and the next chapter after that was mary shelley so um yeah it was interesting to read from their perspectives and i'm definitely more intrigued about what's going on because it does seem to be and there was also a chapter from a woman who like worked on a farm and it was about like the enclosure of land in the early 19th century and um, that's just really interesting to me like from a political history standpoint so i'm definitely still wanting to read this Louise Erdrich, The Night Watchman, I also still want to read this, is a very different style from other things that I read, but her characters already feel so vivid um, and I'm really enjoying the atmosphere and the, again, political history from a very different time period. Now, like, I know a little bit about the enclosure of land, I don't know anything about the Emancipation Pill in the 1950s, um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how this develops. It's gonna, it seems like it's going to be a very personal political book, which is something that I love and I really love the writing it's definitely masterful and then finally scabby queen by Kristen Innes which is about a woman who was a pop star in the 1990s for some reason I thought it was like the 1970s and 80s I think it's just because that's when I associate political music with um but this is the 1990s and um yeah it's just it's really well written and it's not a time period that I often read but I think that that is something that I am interested in. Again it's being told from multiple perspectives which is something that I love in a book so um, I think that I will enjoy this and again it is a political historical book which is interesting that all three of these books have that theme and I never even noticed it. Maybe I'll do a reading vlog where I just read these three books to talk about political historical fiction. I have now read the beginnings of all 12 books I have from the library and have only decided to give up two of them, which was The Quarry by Ben Halls, which I just found the writing not to be that strong. And um, although the setting was done really well, I felt like the stories petered out. Um, there wasn't really much understanding of the point of it. And then um, an isolated incident was the writing style just wasn't for me or maybe it could be for me but um, I was just not in the mood for it and um, it wasn't what I was expecting from the book. It was definitely written in a much more uh, women's fiction style than a literary fiction style which is fine. It's just not what I was expecting or what I wanted from the book so I'm not going to read that one. I'm going to return that one too. Um, even though probably I could still finish it. Um, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a terrible book, but you know, I've got lots of books to get through and all of the others were better. So that's basically why I'm getting rid of it. So what have I learned from this <laughs> experiment? I am really good at picking books that I think I will like from the synopsis because apart from two of them, I have got on well with all of these books. Some of them have had lots of hype, like If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha. Um, and some of them I've never heard anyone else talk about, like, uh, a registry of my passage upon the earth. I've been drawn to the books that I know I will like, which is good, I suppose. Um, I've also learned that I just need to not borrow books until I've finished reading the books I already own. Because I'm not borrowing books that I don't like or I'm not interested in. I'm just I'm just interested in more books than I could possibly read. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a bit different from my normal videos, um, but I definitely enjoyed giving it a go. I'm not sure I'll do it again, but it was an interesting experiment. Let me know in the comments what you do when you have too many books from your library and you're not sure uh, that you can manage to read them all before you need to return them, or if you just own too many books. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe because I put out new videos every Wednesday, Friday and Sunday and so I'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye!